In this first segment of two EPM nuggets, we'll delve into two pivotal EPM policies, advanced and trust policies, exploring their functionalities and implications. By the end of this video, you should understand the different EPM policy types and how they can benefit you. EPM is an agent-based solution, meaning it is necessary to install an agent, which is a piece of software installed on the endpoint to perform a specific function. Once installed on an endpoint, the EPM agent can be configured to audit events, such as when an application is launched and what permissions an application is launched with. These events get sent to the EPM console, so an administrator can use them to create policy. Policies are the backbone of EPM. With EPM policies, an administrator can create a specific set of rules to secure endpoints while enabling business continuity. There are a total of six main types of policies. Advanced Application Policies, Trust Application Policies, Prudentials Rotation Policies, Privilege Threat Protection Policies, Script Distribution Policies, and User Policies. This video will cover the first two. Advanced Application Policies are the bread and butter of implementing least privilege with EPM. Application Policies allow administrators to create rules for how applications can be used on endpoints. For instance, we can give IT admins the ability to elevate administrative tools required for their daily work, while restricting elevation for things not required. When creating an advanced application policy, you have the option to apply the following controls to any application contained in the policy definitions. Allow an application to run normally under the context of the logged in user. Block an application from running entirely, regardless of the user context. Elevate an application regardless of whether or not the application requests to run under an administrative context. The Elevate if necessary policy will only elevate the application if the application requests to run with elevated permissions and will run under the user context otherwise. Once the desired action type has been selected, there are many different parameters we can use to qualify which conditions need to be met for a particular application before it can be elevated. However, some parameters are more secure than others. It is also important to note that too many parameters can cause management overhead. For instance, even though it may be very secure to define a specific file checksum, that checksum will have to be maintained and updated every time a new or different version of the application needs to be elevated. It is important to balance security with management overhead to find a solution that best fits your organization's needs. Trust policies allow applications that come from a trusted source to be elevated if needed along with their child processes if configured to do so. A very common use case is trusting any software that comes from a software distribution tool such as SCCM, Intune, or Jamf. This will allow the install and execution of any software that comes from these tools and can greatly reduce the effort needed to create policy for business-approved applications. Other sources, such as a network shares, website URL, or publisher signatures can be useful sources to trust for ease of administration. Bear in mind that while trusted sources are convenient, they must be used with caution. In the case of trusting a publisher's signature, any supply chain attack where an application's code has been compromised will still be able to be executed since it would be using a trusted signature. While trusted publisher signatures can be a quick way to enhance security early on, a much better long-term solution would be to create an advanced policy where more controls can be put in place to prevent a something like a supply chain attack. Check out our other video nuggets on quick start and policy development to get more information on how to create secure policy effectively. Thank you for watching. Keep exploring and expanding your knowledge of additional EPM policies by watching the second installment of this video series.